Why hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 538. This is 538 of the Agostino Zynga show, I hope you're doing well wherever, wherever this podcast may find you. I hope you're doing fine and dandy, you're living well, you're in good health and you're somewhat enjoying this crazy time that we're living in right about now. If it's your first time, check out the show via YouTube, you know what to do, smash like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five star review. At the moment, there is a star review system on Spotify, so if you're listening via that, leave me any star review. I don't care if it's one or if it's five, just leave me some review on there so people know that people are tuning into the show via Spotify and they can do that group think thing and think oh my god someone else is watching it or listening to it so i'm gonna check it out too so do that for me please i'd be greatly appreciated and lastly if you want to support the podcast via patreon you can as well there's a link in the description you get access to all my bonus shows one per week as well as a live stream that's happening the end of the month so if you want to listen to the bonus episodes of the show which are I, I think really good because i'd usually do them only audio only and i find with podcasting if you stick to the actual um Def test what definition of what a podcast is, which is just audio, and you're just talking into a mic about random topics that you thoroughly kind of research and you have an actual hot take about. Then, really, I think the bonus episodes are actually better than the main podcast, in my own opinion. So, if you want to check out the bonus episodes, there's a ton on there. I uploaded one the other day. Make sure you check it out at patreon.com for just Agostino. The link is in the description. You can get access to all my bonus shows as well as any bonus content only available on Patreon. It's only one pound, the equivalent of one dollar to subscribe on there. There's other tiers too if you want to support the kid further. But I only request one pound, the equivalent of one dollar to get access to all the bonus content and you get access to everything else. If you want to do the higher tiers, you just doing it because you want to support the guy but if you want to have the bonus content regardless you only have to subscribe for one dollar one pound so get subscribed jump on there now let's get those numbers up let's see if i can end the on 100 backers that would be mad didn't it? imagine if i got 100 i'm on 20 something now at the moment so still a long way to go and i've been on 20 for like two years so the 100 is gonna take like a while but you never know you got a dream sometimes you got a dream but yeah um apart from that let's crack on with the show we've got tons to talk about so grab yourself a drink or whatever I've got a little bottle of water, as you can hear there. Get whatever you need and let's crack on in it. First things first, obviously, I'm doing the 75 hard challenge. I start again Monday while well, I'm recording this Tuesday, but I started again on Monday. So I'm going again because I was a full week because I kind of flopped on the Saturday that I started. So I'm going to go again from Monday as being my first day, which will take me across to... So I should finish the 75 hard challenge on the 26th of March. So that's the time I'm going to finish. Now, the plan is... To probably do updates i'm gonna do updates probably every 10 days up until the last week and then of course i'll do it you know i'll do it obviously on the fifth day so i'm going to every 10 days i'm going to check in give you guys an update i should obviously do one this day innit? anyway i'll do one on the, on the 10 days so this will be the first day but i'll do the 10 day one coming up um and obviously you know it's a standard plan i goes you guys already heard about it you gotta follow a diet no cheat meals no alcohol um uh working out twice a day uh one one what one of them has to be outdoors and also drinking a gallon of water and obviously reading 10 pages of a book um per day which shouldn't be too bad and if talking about books i've actually got some new books that i'm going to be reading for this month so if you want to know what kind of books i'm into then check these bad boys out number one i've got less than zero by brett easton ellis um i only picked this up randomly because of the weekend album there's actually a track on there called less than zero and i thought hmm, i wonder if you got inspired by the brett easton ellis book which i haven't read i've read a few of his books already obviously he's the guy that did american psycho so i went to check out less than zero because i heard this is rather good maybe some people would even say this is actually better than american psycho so i went to check that out and obviously i got the heads up from you know the weekend that he's obviously been in that sort of zone so i picked up less than zero by brady St. ellis so that should be a fun read i've also got the autobiography of robbie williams called feel it's meant to be the best one i think this is the one that was the controversial one the one that had a little like illicit details and insights into how not amazing it is to be mega famous as robbie williams was because at one point even still now robbie williams i'd imagine if you walk down the street somewhere in the uk would get mobbed he was like the number one he was like a, he was amazing i mean like he's he was amazing a real jack the lad 
um, made good songs, had a bit of a bop and groove to him, even being a white boy. Do you know what I mean? He just was effortlessly cool, which is really rare too because he came from a boy band and usually guys that come from boy band back then weren't the coolest. So for him to be cool back then and be unabashedly British too, he didn't try and pretend to be American or anything. I think that really worked out for him. And again, for a pop star, man, he was on another level. So definitely I'm, I'm looking forward to reading this one. And also the reason why I picked it up is because he's got a recent episode. He was on, um, he was a guest on the Fear of One podcast cost so if you're a fan of the la comedy scene guys and you like the stuff that i speak about when it comes to brendan shorb and the kid i recommend you check out fear of one's podcast he's got one where he's talking to robbie williams and this other guy who if i'm not mistaken was one of chris D'Elia's friends i think he's ditched chris D'Elia, obviously off the back of his allegations and now he's hanging around all Williams. But i'm pretty sure that guy used to hang around with chris D'Elia a lot i forgot his name irish dude but um rob williams is a star of the show he really gives a great interview super insightful very inquisitive he clearly is a fan of fios comedy too and i didn't know he actually lives in la full time which is crazy which explains why we don't really see him in the uk too tough he actually likes being anonymous kind of in the us because obviously he's a bigger star here in the uk than he is in the us but I recommend you check it out. It's Fear Vaughn podcast. Um, he, Robbie Williams was on there recently. Amazing, amazing episode. Next, I've got the first book in the series from The Expanse because I'm currently watching it at the moment. It's in this last season. Unfortunately, I think it's only eight episodes uh, for the entire season. I think there might be one left or maybe two left. I'm not too sure. But I thought, you know what, in order to because I think we have to wait a while for the expense to come back again because I think there's some sort of licensing thing happening where they can't able to... What did I read in the subreddit? Something about... There's some weird licensing rule where they can't just immediately do another season. So they have to kind of put it on ice and then do it for another company and then relaunch it on another platform. I don't know. some complicated thing. But it might be one of the best sci-fi TV series of all time in terms of the detail, in terms of the um, hard science too, right? A lot of the science that goes into space travel is actually correct. Um, really weird details that they didn't need to do that only kind of geeks like myself and other sci-fi fans would have clocked on allegedly because again I haven't read the book but supposedly from a lot of people on the subreddit and people that I follow on Twitter they've said it, it's really really faithful to the book and in places where they take some creative license it makes sense right it's because some details of book you can't always translate in the series and I guess vice versa so the bits that they did kind of run amok and do their own thing on still made sense for the overall story so people have always said like if you really want to get a rich a kind of another layer to the series then if you should read the books so i'm going to be reading that as well for this month this is all for january and then the last thing i've got is the warrior diet and i got this randomly because i listened to a podcast featuring the guy i forgot his name he's like an anti-aging doctor dude and he was talking to another guy on a podcast i've got I wish i remember the names and they mentioned how um all intermittent fasting and stuff is like not that new right because something obviously i'm doing now with the 75 hour challenge supposedly intermittent fasting isn't a new thing um and this guy called um ori hoff my hoff merkler is somebody that, 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 that was a proponent of intermittent fasting before it was called that and i think he kind of ascribed to the idea of like eating once a day in order to get all these mad health benefits so i'm definitely going to be reading that as well to get a bit more hard science in my head when it comes to working out because i've always found not sure about you guys as great as it is to jump on a new diet again because i've yo, i'm a yo-yo guy i go up and down in weight all the time so i've been through this you know ring a lot i always find in order to give myself in order to make myself convinced that i'm doing the right thing and to also make sure i do the right make the right decisions that i don't like drop off and do something dumb and, like eat a donut i have to kind of have information to hand and i think <clears throat> Being able to read material and books on the kind of diet I'm doing or, ex yeah, basically in more information, maybe listen to a podcast, watch a, a video on YouTube. Usually those things kind of strengthen my resolve and allow me to kind of stick to what I'm doing and stick to the diet for the entirety of the time that I need to do it for. And hope, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with those um, books or the Worry Diet book I've got at the moment. So that's what I'm currently doing. And I can't really wait to see how I'm going to transform at the end of the 75 days. And again, it's less about the body thing. It's more so about the mind. Because it's been a long time since I've gone through this sort of like... um. Uh, <sighs> 
kind of enforced discipline. I usually did it all every single year, but obviously with the pandemic, I kind of dropped off as everyone else did. I kind of spent that first year of the pandemic just ballooning up to like, I don't know, nearly 280 pounds. It was insane. I'm about 260 now. The plan is to get myself down to 200. That's the plan. I want to get myself to 200. I know it's going to be a bit of a stretch to lose 60 pounds in 75 days, but you know, um, stranger things have happened. So that's the plan I'm going to do. Aiming for it, stretch goal, moonshot. But you know, it is what it is. Um, Apart from that, what else is happening? Um, yeah, let's jump in right into it. Random bit of the show. So, next news to kind of just get into straight away at the top of the show is this amazing news. Okay, because I haven't been on Instagram, I kind of purposely put myself away from it because I just want to stick to doing what I'm doing at the moment. Doesn't mean I've deleted it off my app or anything or dis disabled my account. I think that's usually a sign of somebody that doesn't have any willpower. And again, I'm somebody that is quite strong minded, I've got a lot of willpower, I'm very driven in the things that I do, so I can leave it alone without touching it and getting excited so that's been fine but anyway i missed out on some news courtesy of instagram because it looks like it's possession the uh paris-based um techno party has now decided to do a london edition of the party in e1 of all places and i think you guys have maybe heard me mention e1 a few times on here because it's been one of the quite i think it's been one of the successes of the pandemic sort of raving era um it's a place that i kind of really didn't wasn't really the biggest fan of mostly because of the crowd but i feel like within the pandemic era they've kind of changed up their programming and made it a little bit more varied it's not just all edm and it's not just all tech house and it's not just all you know uh, melodic house right it's a little bit different and now they're obviously introducing this type of music obviously they had um budokai on i think a couple of weeks ago a few months ago i forgot when it was on so they're clearly trying to diversify their um, event bookings. It's a little bit schizo. So, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you go there. But I think if you check the listings ahead of time and you kind of make sure you like the kind of music they're playing, you should be OK. But it can be a little bit schizo, especially when they do different rooms. Sometimes the main room and the other room is completely different vibe from who's, you know, there's nothing really tying people together or tying the music together apart from people just getting on it and having a good time. But Possession, again, was one of the other i thought victors from the pandemic i think because if i'm not mistaken one of their first parties maybe came no the first party that i saw on boiler room maybe happened just before the pandemic right if i'm not mistaken around maybe novemberish time and um when we were obviously locked down and they were still kind of open over there in in paris or in france they had the ability to put on these parties and then we got to see all these clips online of these amazing crazy flipping parties outdoors in it because i think at the time you couldn't do, do parties indoors because of the covid and all this sort of stuff so they kind of obviously uh, improvised and decided to do gatherings outdoors technically in an open air space and they looked amazing they kind of reminded you of old school videos of like love family park and shit right you remember those videos back in the day on youtube that you'd watch and stuff with like thousands of people in you know high off ecstasy smiling topless looking fabulous and dancing just absolutely dance that's what the one thing you remember from those love family park videos everyone's obviously got you know pupils the size of cds i mean pupils the size of cds sorry but the one thing you do notice which is a complete contrast to nowadays clubbing is that people are actually having a good time and i think we were kind of reminded of that fact when we saw the possession party videos right we thought oh my god this looks absolutely amazing These people are actually raving they're actually raving and the one thing that actually made you think even more so was the um first video i remember seeing from them via boiler room when they did that party i don't know if it was here i'm pretty sure it was in paris i don't think it was here it was it was in paris oh yeah i was right it was november so it was around the time just a few months before i went to berlin because i went to berlin just before the lockdown happened which is when i kind of realized okay this is serious because i remember going to berlin in february of 2020 and it being pretty dead and i was like oh it's the first time i've ever been to you know of course i don't live there so i'm only visiting there but the times i visit it's always busy so to go to that sort of club and it'd be half empty it was a bit weird i was like oh it's the first time i remember saying to myself this is the first time ever i've been able to like stand at the back and i was able to see straight through and see the dj booth before when i've been there either maybe i was too high or too drunk but before i've been there right i was standing at the back and you legitimately couldn't see where the dj was you just see people throbbing and dancing and having a good time but you couldn't see them there's no way because obviously they don't shine a light on them anyway it's quite different how they do things but you just couldn't see you had to kind of really go through people and cut through and be like excuse me excuse me excuse me to see anything so that was when i kind of realized but this video and again the subsequent videos from possession i think was what put them on the map and let people think okay let people know these guys are doing things properly really really properly like they've got you know djs we hadn't heard of 
or people these weren't popular maybe on this side of town um they had clearly people that are there for the music and not just there to pose and record videos like all those circle local crowds and shit that we always kind of see on the timeline it was just a, it was just like a refresh it was like it's not to say nothing's good or bad nah, let's just be honest the circle local shit is rubbish isn't it right you're seeing all these people just standing up with their screens recording fucking another martinez brother set that's exactly the same as the other set that they've seen online so it's not even like you're recording anything special again no slash those guys because they're ogs and shit but come on like you do really need to record another seth chocolate set on your flipping phone you don't really um if, and anything i'd imagine those kind of people would want you to just enjoy the music just close your eyes enjoy the music you know take off your fedora and your fucking glasses and just have a good time you know take off your glasses I think, right, but anyway let's just play the video of the possession part in paris and then i'll continue So my computer is going a bit mad because obviously it's not the best in the world. But let's just pause it there for now. But obviously positions, like I said, where they were one of the victors, I think, from the lockdown, because I think people realized, oh, wow, um, you know, those sort of clubs that we see from those old school videos and documentaries, they actually still exist or that kind of scene still exists in it. And it was a big deal. And obviously um, people have kind of, you know, become big fans of them. They've obviously expanded and done raves in other places. They've done them all over Paris or well, mostly outside of the outside of the main city centre on the outskirts. Maybe places where they can kind of run things a bit and mock and run things a little bit more DIY and make the music the volume a little bit louder. And now they decided obviously to do a party here in E one. The lineup features obviously nine and nine dead live. They've got Charlie Sparks, they've got Kla, they've got Lucine, Parfait randomer obviously big fan of him seen him a couple times here in london i think at the cause and maybe mixed garage previously what it was called now it's called obviously the color factory but he played there one time somewhere i haven't seen nothing that's a tall dutch guy and someone called trim who i don't know so that should be a flipping amazing amazing night really 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 going to be an amazing night and um like i said the e1's maybe one of my favorite venues here in london because obviously it's kind of near where i live i can get there in like half an hour or so so it's not too shabby and the uber ride back home isn't too bad the security guards are a little bit handy in the beginning you have to kind of go through the same sort of shit you have to go through in other places you know empty your pockets go through scanner blah 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 but once you're in there they tend to leave you alone if you get what i mean it's like completely different from the vibe you get in that fabric whereas you know they're kind of outside and they're inside because they've got their flashlights on and they're moving. But as I think, from what I've seen so far when I went to E1, they tend to not be so aggressive with the flashlights on the dance floor. And they tend to kind of, they're still there, you know, you, you know security is there, but they tend to kind of just patrol and make sure no one's going crazy or, you know, ODing on ketamine or anything. So that's fairly okay. And um, like I said, um, I'm just a big fan of how they put parties together. I'm a big fan of the people they book. Um, they seem to kind of get it. And for whatever reason, you know, Maybe it's the way they started and the videos they put out. But from what I've seen so far, the crowds seem to always be up for having a good time. And I don't know how you kind of perfect that again. From being a promoter myself, I know how difficult it is to kind of get people to go out to your event in the first place. Even if you're not charging, it's hard to get people to leave. The fact that they charge all their events and all their events are charged, you know, they're not £10 tickets. They're usually €20 Euros plus or something. I think even this one that I purchased a ticket for, you had to purchase two tickets. You couldn't purchase one. So it came up to about, I don't know, nearly €30 Euros or something along that line. So it's not cheap. But for whatever reason, people still pay to tickets to go and they always go with the right attitude they go to dance they go to have a good time they obviously they're going to come kind of pose a bit because obviously there's like you loads of young hot skinny looking people i just saw in the flipping video you don't really see any flipping gigantos like myself in there and it like i mean old men in the corner which i'm going to be when i go to this one but it's good to see man it really is and i think that's the other kind of benefit because i said before in position i think are the are one of the only winners from the pandemic because again you know we were all locked in at home we all kind of we didn't have places to go and then we saw these videos of these crazy french people dancing in these derelict you know uh spaces and areas the other good thing i think could come from it too especially off the back of possession 
it felt like there was a reintroduction or the reawakening of the club kids spirit in clubs it felt like because I think maybe it's a consequence maybe it's just all coincidental but it felt like to me because we all weren't able to go out the moment clubs were opened or the moment we could go to like an illegal party people wanted to make an event of it they wanted to make it a, a thing it wasn't just turning up to somewhere in a hoodie so they would go out buy a particular outfit maybe edit an outfit maybe cut and paste stitch this cut that blah 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 paint your face and go out and actually make it an event right so it kind of reminded me of the old soho days back in the days right in like the early 2000s where people would actually go out and be an actual club kid like put on a wacky outfit and just go loose or just kind of make a, an entirely new persona for yourself and just kind of go incognito and just have a good time and i think that's been again a consequence of the lockdown because we're not taking the parties for granted anymore so if you're going out and you're going to risk your health and you're going to maybe risk the health of people around you at least you want to go out with a bank you know what i mean you want to go out and if you're going to kind kind of you know die off the back of this rave at least you're gonna die fabulous and raving your face off and snorting a bunch of stuff do you know what i mean that's what maybe i feel like it happened as well so really looking forward to it um i think it, i forgot to say the date but e1 london possession 18th of february so i'm gonna be there sweating my face off glasses on with a bottle of water so if you're gonna be around definitely let me know and if you're there say hi because it's definitely gonna be a good night i definitely up uh, definitely think so um it's going to be one of those ones where you know probably going to go from the beginning all the way to the end pace yourself if you can and like i said you know e1's a great venue the sound i think is really good especially in the main room um definitely one of my favorite places to go easy to get to um easy connections to leave there's a mcdonald's that's 24 hour one around the corner like it's a fairly decent place i think there's a couple of offices around the areas too if you want to carry if you want to get a couple of beers on the way there um decent i'm not gonna lie decent and so far they've made some great changes in terms of their booking so clearly they are trying to diversify the crowd and make it a little more interesting so it should be a good night i'm really looking forward to it and hopefully you know we don't get any crazy variants between now and then so hopefully fingers crossed it happens but yeah possessions e1 not possessions possession happening at e1 london 18th of february and you know check it out check it out check it out um next on the list here what else do we have oh yeah another one to mention so another thing that's been good too off the back of the pandemic one of the only slight silver linings i felt like has been the re-emergence or the kind of um what is it, it yeah the re-emergence of the residents resident dj because obviously with the pandemic some places weren't able to welcome in you know foreigners right weren't, weren't able to welcome in people from other countries especially in london you know we've been able to keep our clubs open for a pretty decent amount of time and unfortunately especially with us being you know um out of eu it, it kind of didn't really allow people to come in and be able to play raves and play parties as they were as they did prior which then shifted the clubbing i felt no, which, which then shifted the priorities of the event bookers or the people putting together the nights to ensure that the places were full but then obviously you couldn't just book the same old big headliner so you had to kind of maybe go back to your um your roller decks and pull out some resident djs that you maybe have given the random friday or saturday here and there to to maybe have a chance to can maybe fill those places out and again i've mentioned prior to before like I feel like in the UK especially, it's really difficult, maybe more so than most places, to make it as a DJ anyway because the competition is so... There's too much competition, basically, right? It's kind of hard to crack through. I don't even know what the stats are, the numbers, but it must be really low by the amount of people that start and actually make it in a place where someone actually pays the money to go and play. It's really, really difficult. And the levels are really high too because everyone DJs here, especially from a young age, we listen to our radio music. is pretty decent radio stations. You get to hear a whole variety of different genres. You grow up in a very, especially if you live in London, you grow up in a very multicultural community or multicultural city or area, wherever it may be. So you're kind of, you kind of absorb all of these different influences through osmosis without sometimes even realizing so by the time you do decide to dj your taste in music i feel like is a lot more well-rounded than most people would be i feel like i don't know whether or not you guys agree but i'm not, not trying to you know suck my own dick as a uk person but i think that's basically what happens you end up being a lot more in tune so then when you end up djing you end up being quite decent you just have to learn the technicalities of it but your ideas and how you kind of want to 
put together a set and you're kind of you know kind of um yeah all that sort of stuff right in terms of your programming and whatnot and your sequencing is really good you just got to learn the technical side of things so obviously that means everyone's going to be really good so the standards are really high and because the standards are really high it means that the spots are going to be few and far between especially in london with all these draconian licensing laws of clubs open up and they shut down really quickly so there's not a lot of places to play and the places that are there to play they're gatekept right so a lot of people don't want to bring in new people because they want to get let their friends play or because in general it's pretty risky to just trust somebody you don't know because they might empty the entire dance floor and put you in a red and you're not able to pay a mortgage so i understand the pressure on that side too but they did feel like there wasn't a clear path a clear kind of progression plan in place or system or structure in place that would allow somebody to go from being a bedroom dj to suddenly playing at fold to suddenly playing at print works it doesn't exist and the reason why it doesn't exist because we didn't really have resident djs everything in our club nights in the uk centered around getting big acts from foreign countries to come in and play and obviously that worked for a particular moment or particular time but then after a while you know you start to become a little bit fatigued and i feel like even before the pandemic it felt like to me that whole like booking of the biggest act like booking the top 50 djs to play in your place or you play in your club it was kind of running its course in london i don't know if people agree but i felt like it was running its course people were getting a little bit tired these places these um raves weren't selling out as easy as they were prior and then bang the pandemic happens and it forces these clubs to start becoming a little bit more creative with their bookings and maybe change the way that they're kind of approaching um their nights and maybe maybe try and introduce a residence program to get the punters used to that kind of music because i understand the argument on the other side the argument on the other side is that if i get a resident program in place and i play with the djs that nobody fucking knows you know on my biggest nights of the year then there's no guarantee that people are going to buy tickets and come because they don't know who the hell these people are but then the other side of the argument would be that people are never going to know who they are unless you book them right and obviously you can you can kind of have the big act and then you can kind of fill in the slots to kind of assist the person or to kind of assist the big act with the resident DJs but in London for the longest time what they do is that they'd usually just fill in the entire slots with big names and maybe it, sometimes they'll have the kind of the person doing the opening set of the night like you know the fucking graveyard shift where nobody's there from like I don't know seven to like ten you would do that set nobody's there or maybe the closing set where everyone leaves what the main DJs played that's the time when maybe a resident DJ would play but the actual times where punters come in and they might they might find a new favorite DJ they don't they wouldn't play them there so it's a kind of a bit of a give and take but it looks like this club London sorry this club called the Color Factory here in Hackney Wick which is um formerly called Mixed Garage a place that I went to quite a lot prior to the pandemic and then I think it changed ownership and now supposedly it's a black owned club which is quite cool to see and it's quite evident that that happened because the programming and the people that play there is completely different to what it was when I went there so I think one of the last times I went to Mixed Garage um Tricks from Innovision was playing there and now the people that play there are completely different to the kind of stuff that Tricks plays the the scene that he represents the people that go to that sort of night so it's quite cool to see that kind of evolution they've changed the inside of it a little bit um i like what they've done with the toilets i like what they've done with the smoking area it feels like a funner place to be in terms of how you hang around in it the sound unfortunately from when i went recently to a um, inferno it feels like the sound has suffered maybe it's because of residential complaints or something but the volume isn't as good as it was prior but still as a for a club like in Hackney Wick again with good transport links a place where you know you could go to different other places you go to another place too called the yard if you if you're not really liking that place there's a good there's a couple other spots you can kind of bounce around to and obviously there's the adv advantage if you end up finding friends where you can maybe go over to the warehouses across the across the bridge as well I think they do quite a pretty decent job um, in terms of what they do in terms of programming overall but this is courtesy of resident advisor it says london club color factory reveals the 2022 residents and they've got obviously a list here of resident djs that they're going to be putting in place it says east under the dare um i don't know how you pronounce her name i i, I had a dream i had a dream um danielle Mech, Me, mechatok and Shannon SP will each curate events at Hackney Wick Spot in the coming months. Um, I had had the dream. It's at first on February the fifth, followed by the other, February nineteenth, March twenty sixth, and April twenty third. So it's not even like they're doing the Berlin-y kind of OG way of doing the resident DJ program, where you'd have them playing 
basically most weekends and then you'd have the kind of maybe the payday weekend as a big headliner person they're instead doing it the other way around and they're just giving them random dates throughout the month to just fill it in right which is okay it's a start it's not the best place to start it continues it said color factory one of london's mm -hmm. first sorry few black owned venues also recently teased a partnership with popular queer party crossbreed oh wow interesting interesting here's a person that's in a new residence so they're gonna do a collaboration with crossbreed going forward that's interesting isn't it full time so yeah they've got the whole card here so they're advertising it well they obviously got a bit of press and resident advisor and again i think it's great to see i think this is again one of the small silver linings to come out of the back of covid has been clubs deciding or kind of being forced in a position where they don't have to always rely on big name ticket djs to come in and maybe allowing resident djs to have the opportunity to play in front of a captive because that's what i've always said to my, about myself i rate myself highly but again i'm never going to improve to a level that i want to improve unless i'm playing in front of people because it's all well and good streaming a dj set but there's no you know there's a big difference between streaming a dj set and playing in front of actual people and also i'm never going to get the fans that i need in order to kind of progress my career unless i'm playing in front of quote unquote people and you have to play in front of a captive audience so it's all well and good me playing these pub sets and shit which is nice i really appreciate the time because i wanted to get the ability to play in front of people but being able to play in front of a kind of captive audience who have come out to kind of hear the kind of music that i might be playing and they might make me a new favorite of theirs that kind of goes a long way in terms of building me as a building myself and other djs as an artist and as a dj and also goes a long way to kind of allow the club to gain i wouldn't say credibility but like, yeah kind of credibility and trust so that you can so imagine if you went to one of these nights on like, you know, let's say the first one you went on the February the 5th to go see I Had a Dream. And it's amazing. Maybe you then trust Color Space or sorry, you, you maybe trust um, Color Factory and you're like, you know what? I'm going to go there every Friday when I get paid anyway, just because I know they're always going to have a banging DJs. And if you happen to bump into the guy again or girl, then you're going to love it. But you're still going to just go there because you trust that first night that you knew when you went there. They booked somebody you didn't know and it was great. So, you know, you might as well just take the chance and go again when someone else you don't know is playing. So I think it kind of works for everybody in that regard. So it's great to see, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm really, really happy to see that. And hopefully the DJs that have given a chance take it with both hands and, you know, gain some new fans, you know, absolutely destroy the place and kind of create some really long lasting memories because you know that's what we need to see here especially now going through what we're going through with covid it's nice to have some level of distraction so you can kind of forget the ills of the world for a few hours and then obviously be reminded of it once you wake up but you know small steps small small steps and then more news in resident dj news here because you have mix mag sherelle is heading up a four-week residency in phonics again this all feels like it's only because you know of brexit and of course the pandemic and whatnot but it doesn't matter i still like the fact that these djs especially uk based ones who have been absolutely destroying it um on the local scene for ages are actually getting their just dues and actually get an opportunity to play in these big clubs or in these clubs with a, you know with a big reputation maybe not phonics is not the biggest club but still it's got a good reputation the other people that play there prior you know have kind of given it that clout and it's just a good look overall do you know what i mean because for sure she'll end up making new fans um end up kind of um developing as an artist too and just kind of taking it further from there on so i'm a big fan of that it says here the following sherelle will be appearing at south london club phonics for a four-week residency kicking off on february 4th tickets for sherelle every friday at february are available now starting at just five pound which is great to see um the trailblazing dj and producer and label on a previously told mix on a cover posted on instagram that she can't fucking believe it personally there she is smiling having a good time she says yeah sherelle b2b phonics i can't fucking believe it personally but all next month i'll be playing four nights every friday so your early bird tickets now on ra link in the bio guest to be announced soon so that's pretty sick in it right to be playing four nights back to back like that so big up her colombo group and the owners of phonics said in a statement it's an honor to welcome cheryl to take charge of every friday in february they added the attendees must prepare themselves so it's going to get rowdy for sure in october 29th 2021 so sure grace the cover of mixed mag with an like catching shot on her real horse so yeah, on of her on a real horse to get yourself friendly da, da, da. yeah so yeah big up sherelle um so yeah that should be good to see in phonix again another good venue here in london maybe a bit too far for me because it's in brixton but still great sound great layout um you know can't really complain about it at all and i think going forward it's great to see that we're giving resident djs a chance we're giving uk based djs a chance to play in these venues and hopefully the customers to the punters will give these people a shot 
or maybe go into it you know with an open mind with some open ears and who knows you might find your next favorite dj or artist in one of these places so you know keep your eyes and ears open my g's um let's just bounce around a bit a little bit here let's go to this here this is courtesy of the times right bloody quite an infuriating article if you you know if you're asking me so this is courtesy of the times headline says as follows Paulina Poriskova, the supermodel who dared to look her age. Paulina Poriskova was once the world's highest paid model, but as she's hit her 50s, she says she was suddenly invisible. Now 56, she's leading a new wave of older women taking their place in the spotlight on the catwalk and flaunting on Instagram in her bikini. And, you know, again, the lady's fine to look at. She's obviously very attractive. She's obviously a one percenter in terms of her looks being a supermodel. Um, clearly, if you keep yourself in some level of good nick, you're going to be able to still be of that ilk when you're older too it's not like you're going to suddenly drop off a cliff and become like a, a flipping four or three so you know she's still enjoying i think a life where she probably gets way more attention at her age than most 53 year old women do so i think that's a good thing but i also just think in general it seems to me pretty cringe lame um and just quite sad to see somebody her age kind of bemoaning the fact that she's not getting the attention that she used to get when she was younger it's like what did you expect that's what happens when you get older when you get older sometimes it gets harder to get out of bed it's harder to maybe go on back-to-back -back runs maybe you don't you know you probably breathe a little bit heavier when you're running upstairs um hangovers take longer to recover from maybe you miss out and you kind of you know don't get certain music or certain artists because again you're old as fuck that's kind of the tax you have to pay when you get older you can't be ever young in that regard you can't have everything in that regard too right if you're beautiful as he she is and you're great nick you have a head full of hair your you know your other bits and bobs seem to work then maybe sometimes you have to give up some other things in terms of maybe you're not getting invited to all the cool parties maybe you know not all the guys are looking at you when you go in certain places maybe you're not being considered for certain roles because of your age it just is what it is it's a fact of life and i think there is something quite i think admirable and quite um graceful no you're quite admirable yeah, something very admirable about just growing old gracefully and bowing out before the scene tells you to fuck off, right? Because that's always the nightmare that I have, especially when I go to clubs. You know me, I'm a fan of clubs. I'm a fan of DJing. Obviously, I DJ myself. Um, I'm always very conscious that I don't want to be the old guy in the corner of a club somewhere or the old guy pretending he's young in a club somewhere. I want to go there and appreciate the music. I want to have a good time, but I don't want to come across as if like I'm the old creepy guy at the back. No one wants that. And even more so nowadays with this, especially in London, it feels like there's a new resurgence in the clubbing space. There's a whole new energy there. Like I said before, there's like a, uh, there's like the reawakening of the club kid spirit. And all these kids are going out raving and looking amazing, right? They've got flat stomachs. They've got really tall skin. They've got these amazing faces paints on and makeup and cool outfits that they made themselves and they'll go to fashion school or some cool creative thing that they're doing they got a project with this and this and that they live in flat shares where they're taking photo shoots on stairs and looking amazing and fabulous the last thing you want to do is impede on them right because this is their time this is meant to be this is their time to do their thing like i had my time when i was coming up this is their time so you don't want to kind of be the guy impeding on that so i'm always conscious of it in the back of her head always so if I'm conscious of it and I'm way, way younger than she is, imagine being how old she is and still thinking when you're going to fucking Art Basel or you're going to Coachella that you're going to get the same response as like a flipping Billie Eilish or something walking down the street. Like, what did you expect was going to happen? Like, really? Or like, what does she think? She thinks she's going to compete with Madison Bear in terms of, um, or Bia. Is that Bia? How you spell her name? Madison Bia, yeah, right? Does she think she's going to compete with, with those kind of girls in terms of getting the attention from young men? Like, is she for real? Like, what is wrong with these people, man? But the article, anyway, let's go in the article. It says the following. Um, everyone knows that walking into a party besides a supermodel is a terrible idea. But Paulina Poroskova is inviting me to do just that. She has a point to prove. She says, you have to come with me, she insists. Nobody believes me unless they see it. My girlfriends thought I was joking at first. Now they all witnessed it. What is, what is this party trick that which a 56-year-old sports illustrated swimsuit clad two-time cover star is proud? She was a sports illustrated cover star. Do you know how you do you know how good you got to look to be on sports illustrated cover star? Or to be on a sports illustrated cover? 
maybe nowadays you know because of political correctness you know they put just about anybody on there to celebrate them but back in the day you'd have to be tall ripped and tight in all the right places to be on the cover of sports illustrated that was like the piece de resistance right that meant not only were you athletically gifted but you're also incredibly attractive like you know how rare that is as a trait <clears throat> to look like chris brown and also be very good at the sport you do <laughs> it continued <clears throat> it continued it says here um <clears throat> sorry my bad what's the party trick da, da, da. what new skill has the once highest paid model in the industry named by harper's bazaar in 1992 as one of the america's 10 most beautiful women added to her repertoire she says i am now completely invisible proscove explained i walk into a party i try to flirt with guys and they'll just walk away from me mid-sentence to pursue some 21 year old someone 20 years younger i'm very single i'm dressed up and i made an effort nothing so this old hag right going around whoring herself out in parties that she's probably not invited to trying to what trap some young guy who's obviously trying to hook up with some other young lady and then she's getting offended that the young guy doesn't want to talk to her it's like are you insane let's just imagine if a dude if like some 56 year old sports illustrated dude came on this what had the very same interview and it was a roles were reversed and he was like when i go to parties all these young girls don't want to talk to me they'd be calling him a predator you're preying on younger women go home granddad but for some reason they have to celebrate this lady and again like i said i just think there's very there's something very um unbecoming about a lady her age still trying to be an attention seeker at this big age of yours like what are you doing you've had all the fruits of you've had all the fruits the world's had to give you especially for winning the genetic lottery because she's not had to you know this is just luck you get born the way she, she's born you get blessed with the genetics that you get blessed with that allows you to have a body where maybe she doesn't put on weight as easy i don't know whatever the circumstances are but you just get the genetic lottery where you just look the way you look proportions length and limbs and shit and you know cheekbones and you you get all the riches from that because usually from my experience again you know i'm a fashion guy it's very rare if you look like a model that you don't get scouted eventually it might not be now it might be later but eventually if you look like if you've got very model-esque features or you look very freakishly you know striking somebody's going to notice you and want to give you an opportunity to make some money by standing you know and posing around in some clothes that you couldn't afford people are going to do that and you're going to enjoy it you're going to have a good little run you're going to get your money and you're going to continue living your life but you had the opportunity to kind of extract everything that you could from that opportunity and she probably had probably more so than anybody because she's white and blonde so the opportunities probably you know are um are heightened somewhat especially when it comes to women women obviously earn far more in modeling than men do so great you did it bow out gracefully there is honestly a skill there's already something to be heralded and to be kind of um lauded for the person because i've always said this as well this is kind of an adage i live by i don't want to be the old guy in the back of the club and also i'm very very conscious about being the guy that knows when to leave a house party you know after you go to an afters after a night out especially an afters you go to a party you go to a rave somewhere you're having a good time you're getting high you're getting drunk you have you're raving you you found some new friends a smoking area they invite you back to an afters you don't know who these people are you go to the afters you're hanging out and it's usually a bit of an anti-climax from when you went to the club right it's never it's never as good as you think it's going to be it's usually just six people in a room you know snorting whatever left they got snorting whatever's left over drinking warm beers and talking nonsense there's a time there's a perfect window of time where if you stay longer you know you might just upset them the ambience of the space people might think you know i don't know whatever and there's a time when you leave it just at the right time where people are going to be like oh no don't leave and they're going to be like longing to see you again it probably won't materialize because usually you know whoever you exchange numbers with uh, and afters you rarely keep in touch for longer than maybe a couple of months but still there's a skill to leaving an afters or an house party at the right time and not being too much of a bother not being too much of a ball ache and just leaving not you know having vomit over your jumper or missing your phone or whatnot just leave leave with grace with your held with your head held up high maybe not too late maybe not at flipping 11 a.m in the morning just leave leave before someone tells you you have to leave and the same thing comes with this lady your time is up lady like your time is up you're going to compete with and again anyway let's continue with the article i'm just raving about it so again she looks brilliant like i'm sure there's other guys there that'll be super into her. maybe not 20 30 20 year olds or 30 year olds but i'm sure there's plenty of guys out there it continues it says some women say it kicks in at 40 others when they finally let themselves go great sorry 
Virginia Woolf described the phenomenon in Mrs. Dalloway in 1925, age 43. In 2005, 47-year-old Kate Bush summed it up in How to Be Invisible with the lyrics, Hem of an anorak, stem of a wallflower, hair of a, do- hair of a doormat. The actress whose roles dry up and windows left... Uh, who, sorry. The actress whose roles dry up, the widows left off guest list, bar presence network, um, social attraction diminished, the female invisibility cloak falls heaviest on those um, most used to being looked at as well as or instead of listened to at, uh, and the time before it smothers you, speeds up with every child you have. Yo, are they trying to make us feel, are they trying to make us feel bad for really attractive people maybe not being attractive until the day they die? Are you for real? This is what I should be feeling sad for or I should feel bad for you because you don't, sorry you're not as hot as you were when you were 20 when you're fucking 56 years old or maybe you're not as attractive to younger guys as you were like are you insane is this i'm sure when she was 18 and somebody 56 tried to say oh i was really hot when i was 18 would she have given that guy a chance and he's 56 of course not you want to go out with a jerk or with the popular guy in your school you don't care about a 56 year old guy that's it um she says here People between 50 and 80 reporting feeling 10 years younger than their chronological age. I'll say someone else says Nancy Pachana, a 56 year old professor at the psychology of University of Queensland and the co-director of the Aging Mind Initiative. She says, so you might easily feel 40, but it's as though you no longer exist. <laughs> it continues. Yes, it's a slow fade, says Poriskova. Like the boiled frog, you don't know until you're gone. It has. It was around the same time my marriage fell apart. My husband was no longer interested in me. And as I started looking around, I realized I was invisible to the population at large. It made me feel really invisible, really terrible about myself. And also, you know what? I call bullshit on this. I'm oh, sorry, I call bullshit. I've been around enough guys to know that most guys, you know, don't really have options. They just get what they're given, right? Especially because usually it's the woman that has to select. The woman has to say, yes, I want you. And then you have a chance. And then even then you can still mess it up, right? Because I don't think guys understand that when it comes to the dating process or the seduction process, you can do something, you can maybe wear something and it could completely make the girl just, you know, you could be invisible to a girl very, very quickly. If you do the wrong thing, you say the wrong thing, you wear the wrong thing, or you just move your body in a weird way. It's like girls, um, girls, red flags and things that kind of rule you out are really long. So that's the fact that, you know, that's why I'm, the word I'm mentioning is because it puts the onus on the selection, usually on a woman. So guys don't really have an, a choice in this matter. But for the most part, most guys that I know have a thing for older women especially if they've had good relationships with their mum. It's a bit weird to saying, well, sick to say that, but in general, that kind of motherly, warm person always goes down well with guys. I've always found it. Every place I've worked, an older lady has always been somebody that a lot of guys have said, yeah, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would. Most of them have always said that sort of thing, especially if they're kind of mildly attractive. So this idea that somehow this supermodel, again, I'm just talking about regular office ladies, like receptionists and shit and hairdressers or whatnot, right? Who are really chatty and fun and just have a real kind of motherly warm energy about them. People are into them, let alone a flipping supermodel who still looks like a one percenter in terms of looks wise, even though she's 56. Like she's chatting shit. Like maybe the places she's going to, of course, if she's going to a fucking content house, a TikTok party, she's definitely not going to attract those guys. But most clubs in most places, a guy would definitely try and make a move on her. Now, would she be interested in it is another thing. Maybe that's what she means. The kind of girl that she wants isn't talking to her. That's one thing. But to say no men are talking to you at all, that's a lie. Like, I don't believe it. It's a complete lie. Because again, men are starving out there, especially with the pandemic. They're hungry. They're thirsty. Like, give them some some drop of water and they'll be gargling you all day long. I know, gross to say that, but it's true. So this woman's saying that no one's looking at me, no one's looking at me. Like, come on, stop lying. It says here, the only way um, to gain visibility in our society is to look younger. If you look your age, nobody will listen to you. And if you want to be heard, you can't look your age. And if you want to be heard, you can't look. I, no, she's trying. She, she's lying. Look what she looked like when she was younger. And look what she looks like now. Come on, man. Come on. 
Um, it says here, that's why she's taken to Instagram on the internet. Everyone can hear you scream. Even as Paulina Proskova um, feels her presence diminishing in real life, she has since her divorce get built up a base of 700,000 people who follow her one woman resistance movements against being gently, sorry, against going gently into the good night. They comment on her bikini shoots, nudes, yes nudes, and no makeup selfies in their thousands, although not always kindly. There are those mostly men, but not exclusively who tell her to keep house and her clothes on instead no i wouldn't say that again i would not commenting on people's profiles like that but if i was i'll just tell her to grow up i'll tell her accept the fact that you're getting older like the rest of us and just enjoy the twilight of your years what are you doing spending the rest of the 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 remaining years of your life trying to chase guys that are not interested in you like what is it with women that want dudes that don't want them like i don't understand it's from the whole Khloe kardashian tristan thomas thing to this why are you chasing dudes that don't want you dudes who are quite shallow in that they only want really young girls who are really hot right they don't really care about their personality or whether or not you could be a better fit for them no they just want a girl that's really hot and really young so they can kind of show off to their friends cool it's shallow it's a bit creepy whatever that's what they're into why are you competing with those kind of why are you competing for the love and attention of those type of dudes when they're clearly not going to be set up in a position where they're going to be a good partner for you anyway because what's a 56 year old woman want a 30 year old guy to do for her anyway she's pretty successful she's probably pretty rich and pretty well off what's a 36 year old guy gonna do for her really like what is he gonna offer that she can't offer she can't get from somebody maybe closer to her age or maybe closer to life experience forget age life experience it doesn't make any sense it's such a it's, it's a bizarre conundrum and again it goes to the show the thing of like i just think being that old and being such an attention seeker and wanting men to still desire you in that way is maybe a form of mental illness because you have to realize that you had your time you had your time in the sun like everybody does i'm sure when i was younger i looked hotter than i do now i don't think i look hot in general but in general i'm sure i did like everyone else did you had a period in time where you looked great then you start to look not so great but you try and maintain and you try and you know make the best of what you have in that moment that's it it's all you can do but this idea you can trick people into believing that you're younger than what you look like no you look the way you look mostly if people guess your age they'll be right and that's it that's your that's your lot like i don't understand this and it says yeah i started posting the same kind of pictures that have been taken of me since i was 15. i look good i didn't realize it would be shocking for a 50 something year old woman yes you did your attention seeker shut up woman to post in the same bikinis from four years ago that still fit oh, this woman's oh, okay i'm done now and she's up her own ass so much it's okay to google somebody who could be your daughter but not mature women who know themselves and are mostly likely way better at sex yo this woman's a raging oh ain't it what a bad example you're setting to people bro 56 and you're still trying to flip it be a thought like what is she doing grow up man like get a cabin somewhere and i don't know tend to some sheep or whatnot or make a or start up a modeling school where you teach women how to navigate the modeling industry. you know what yeah that would be it her time would be better spent setting up an academy for young girls coming up so they can know how to navigate within the modeling world because i'm sure it's flipping a horror show allow them to you know gain some insights maybe give them uh case studies contacts whatever just so they know just so they can be safe instead of parading yourself on instagram as if you're 20 something again do it yourself it doesn't matter parade yourself but then also kind of i won't say scolding but wagging the finger at men younger men for not liking you or not being into you because they're after younger girls like what what an idiot like what an idiot um, but yeah, I'm going to end it there, man. She's driving me insane. I don't want to get too irate now. It's too late to be shouting and making noise. But what an absolute donut, man. Like, people like this, like, ugh, they set such a bad example for the kids. Really, really do. Because I, I'm a big believer in enjoying yourself when you want to enjoy yourself. Like, have a period in time where you just go crazy, right? Like, these young kids on TikTok and shit who've got loads of money. They've got loads of followers. They've got all these brand deals. And they're going crazy. And doing these pranks. Whatever. Enjoy yourself. Then there comes a time where you grow up. It just is a fact of life. You can't be the jackass for the entirety of your life. Even the jackass guys, they're not still doing the same stunts they're doing when they're flipping 20 something. You eventually have to grow up. And I think there is something so admirable and something to be respected for the person who grows up on their own accord. They don't wait for somebody to tell them, you're too old, get the hell out of here. No, they decide of their own accord. This is my time to bow out gracefully. They salute you and they keep it moving. The person who just holds on for dear life to to still get him like still getting upset when they don't get invited to all the cool parties and you know wearing the most um, 
you know seductive thing they can wear to get the attention of young men it just feels so lame and extremely predatory like i said if this was a man that did this and it was looking or acting like this it would be like the internet would explode if a dude says the stuff that she's saying the internet would fucking explode but here she is people don't looking at me the same because i'm older it's like duh <laughs> like what did you expect like honestly i don't know these people are weird Anyway, moving on quickly, um, we've got this other story that came up just the timeline now that I'm still trying to wrap my head around because I, I don't get it, man. This this dude is like one of the worst leaders of all time in it. Just in terms of setting an example, I just don't understand this. This is courtesy of The Guardian. It says, email shows Boris Johnson aide invited number 10 staff to a lockdown bring your own beers party like fucking wild it says obviously this guy had a back martin reynolds said bruce johnson was accused on monday night of an utterly outrageous breach of lockdown rules as a leaked email showed one of his top officials invited more than a hundred downing street staff to a bring your own booze party during the first lockdown and if i remember correctly that first lockdown was one where they were giving people thousand pound fines i think those videos of, of police officers rocking up to gyms and dragging people out and shit that was the aggressive one right <sighs> The Prime Minister is believed to have attended the number 10 garden party on the 20th of May 2020, along with Charlie Johnson, sorry, Carrie Johnson, um, then his fiance, after it was advertised by the principal secretary, Martin Reynolds, this guy there at the back. Um, hey, who knew these kind of dead looking um, guys were so on getting on it? Like, you wouldn't have thought that, right? The way they spoke about lockdowns, the kind of glee that they got from restricting or denying us the ability to go out and live our lives, you would have felt like they were the kind of dudes who would kind of, you know, who would call the council on you if you played music too loud on a Saturday afternoon, right? They, they felt those kind of guys, you not know, those kind of snitches, those kind of um, curtain twitcher type people. But instead, they were telling us to not go outdoors or telling us not to see our parents or to see our grandparents not to hug our friends or to go to pubs or to go to restaurants when they were doing the complete opposites in their own homes or in the spaces that they were able to get absolutely heinous man heinous 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 um it says here the quote hi all after what has been an incredibly busy period we thought it would be nice to make the most of the lovely weather and have a socially distanced drinks at number 10 garden this evening please join us at 6 p.m and bring your own booze oh my god these people man it invited over 100 employees to the gathering at a time when social mixing was banned right this is again who cares if you do it i don't care what the government officials get up to same way i don't care how many flipping whores footballers you know smash as long as you're delivering on the pitch we don't care but in this case if you're telling the popular if you take it telling the citizens not to do one thing and you're doing another thing like rules for us and not for d or rules for you and not for d or whatever like come on man like about 30 to 40 are said to be have attended with food and wine set out on the tables but staff reportedly expressed reservation at the time yeah i guess they did whilst you're eating your fucking waitrose cheese boards and your fucking um apple spritzers yeah i'm guessing you were rejecting it like shut up someone says yeah um why is martin encouraging a mass gathering in the garden one staffer said according to bbc another said is this for real on the same day oliver dowden the culture secretary had reminded the public at a press conference you can't meet you can meet one person outside of your household in the outdoors public space provided that you stay two meters apart so they took that rule and just timed it by 100 twats the metropolitan police are tweeted telling people that they could have a picnic exercise or do sports outside providing you are on your own or <laughs> with people you live with or just you and one other person like these people are oh god almighty man <sighs> The thing about this as well that's kind of infuriating too because in every other way of life or ever in every other walk of life especially jobs right from working at tesco's to working for a big corporation if you mess up enough times like this you get fired right you get reprimanded you get written up um whatever something happens you have some sort of consequence because you did a bad job right uh, at the time that these guys pay you for right that usually you exchange your time in terms of for money so the 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 time that they have you for on their watch you did a bad job so they're going to reprimand you and hopefully you learn your lesson so you can continue to have your job if you don't they'll let you go and get someone else in that can do the job but for whatever reason when it comes to politics you can just do so many wrong things right so many demonstrably wrong things or you could send out a completely conflicting message than what you're doing in your own personal life and no one bats an eyelid especially in your own party it's not as if that's the conflict of it's not as if like that's a that's um not conflict of interest but you know what i mean like there is no contradiction contradiction doesn't exist 
when you're a politician. It doesn't exist. You can say one thing and do another thing, then you just retcon it and just continue on like nothing happened. Like, this is mad, bruv. Mad, mad, mad. On Monday night, following the news of the leaked email, the Met said that it was aware of the widespread reporting related to the alleged breaches and said it had made contact with the Cabinet Office. The forces previously said it was police. It was policy not to investigate, which basically, of course it was. Johnson, who will now come under huge pressure to explain his own role in the gathering, whether he played any part in the invitation, given the phrase, we would do we thought it would be nice and why his office did not listen to alleged warnings by his former aide Dominic Cummings that appeared to be given against the rules. Cummings revealed that the existence of the 2020 May party in a blog on Friday. Johnson's spokesperson declined to comment. Of course they did in light of the con continuing inquiry into the president, sorry, into the potential breaches of lockdown. Number 10 did not deny this weekend that Johnson and his wife Carrie, whom he married in May, attended the event. Blood. These people are horrible, man. Horrible, horrible human beings. Like people are suffering, going through depression. People, you know, committing suicide and shit. Families being broken up because of the lockdown and not being able to maybe, you know, go outdoors and live there. Like, like so many consequences happen off the back of that first lockdown. And these motherfuckers were thanking themselves for a terrible job by celebrating with a boib, you know, waitrose flipping catered event. Like, ugh, I don't know. What, what what can you say about these people? What really can you say? I don't really know. Um, but, um, next one, let's just move on from that one. Let's talk about this quickly because I thought this was interesting. Where is it? Link, is it there? Let's move there. Is it this one? Yep, it is. And it's this one. No, it's not. It's that one. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah, talk about this. So this is courtesy of one of my favorite podcasts I listened to recently. Well, I've started to listen to it in the last, what, three years or so, it felt like, called The Red Scare, or called Red Scare, sorry, Red Scare Podcast, featuring Anna Cashin and Dasha, whatever her surname is, right? Two, um, two extremely Caucasian New York art hoes who talk about a whole bevy of things, mostly in the realm of the cultural commentary stuff. And um, yeah, I'm I'm a fan of it. I listen to it every week whenever it drops. I, I sub to them on Patreon and shit. So I'm a big fan of what they do. Um, I think they're pretty R-worded in some of the views that they have, but I enjoy the fact that they are quite R-worded and they do not take themselves too seriously. And um, they just cover the things that I'm interested in. And it's nice to hear it from like a female perspective. And yeah, whatever. But it's interesting lately that they took a massive hiatus, right? Massive break in between, maybe the longest um, they've taken so far from what I've seen. And for whatever reason, they feel as if they like don't owe the fans an explanation as to why they've been away for so long. Again, you don't owe a full, you don't really owe anybody an explanation. But once you do come back on air and you explain why you're away and then people take the piss out of you because obviously, you know, they've had some very interesting views when it comes to what they contracted you should expect it right in some respect so the one thing that i have the issue with is the fact that they didn't alert everyone and tell people why they were going to be away or at least tell people hey we're going to be away for this reason you know and let and let people hate on you there or rip you in line and then by the time you come back the kind of the kind of a uh, ritual sort of died down but anyway instead of burying the lead anna k unfortunately got covid during the time that they were on some sort of hiatus which obviously extended it for some period of time and the way that she explains how she got it and the kind of cope and the rationale and the excuses made is pretty puzzling, especially when you consider that she's a new mum. It just blew my mind. It really did. And it kind of speaks to the complete contrast in how people deal with COVID in the US and in the UK. It seems like for whatever reason, the US has politicized COVID and the vaccine to the point where people are willing to take ridiculous risks just to kind of prove their point. And then if their point doesn't get proven, the other side then take a lot of pleasure in the fact that the person contracted COVID and in some cases they pray for them to die, right? You see it happening a lot on that Herman Cain subreddit or Herman Cable Awards subreddit where people post up screenshots and images of people who they followed on social media, random people who they don't fucking know, who maybe are super against the vaccine, super against Biden, whatever they're against, right? And then they kind of follow their progress as they eventually contract the virus and usually pass away. And they sort of take glee in it. It's a really macabre thing. It's a subreddit it exists. It's called the Herman Cain Award. Definitely check it out if you haven't before, right? And obviously it's named after Herman Cain, who himself was a staunch anti-vaxxer only to get COVID himself and and then obviously pass away so it's quite trippy to to see that but it's also like i said the mind-blowing thing about it is the fact that anna k anna Cashin, sorry is a new mum. i think a kid isn't even one years old yet right 
and you just imagine if you're a new mum you would just weigh up your pros and cons and maybe put aside your political um, inclinations or ideological, whatever it may be, right? That's making you a bit hesitant on taking the vaccine. Just say, in terms of risks and in terms of allowing me to be there for my child who will desperately need his mother more than he'll need his father at that sort of age, it probably be wise for me just to get the vaccine, just to avoid any of the other kind of quote unquote long COVID consequences or whatnot, right? You just imagine what it would be. Maybe after that, you might say, I'll draw the line at the double jab and knock in the booster. That's okay. But you would imagine the actual vaccine to begin the thing with either like, two shots might be the first thing you get just so you can cover your bases. But she didn't. She kind of explains here why I'm going to play the clip for you to where they kind of explain how they got it and the cope. It's really puzzling. And then we're going to go on to some of the reactions on social media because they were tearing Anna Kay a new one on the social media. And for whatever reason, she seems to be replying with some vitriol and anger. And I just can't work out why she didn't kind of figure out or why she didn't know that this would be the response like you know you spend again the, the pod I wouldn't say they're known for being mean but you could you wouldn't be far off if you said the way to describe red scare would be like these two white women who are really mean right <laughs> so if they're really mean about people and laugh and glow when people make mistakes and whatnot and you know try and make fun of it and try and make an entertaining podcast it shouldn't be out of the realm of possibility that when you go through something that people think is worth pointing and laughing at, that they're going to take the opportunity to point and laugh. And I think you should just kind of take your licks as it comes and just keep it moving. But engaging people and start like going back and forth, it, you immediately lose. You don't, you don't come out of it looking good at all, especially considering what we're going through. And especially considering her, you know, her situation being a new mum, it just blows my mind. Anyway, this is a clip of Anna Kay and Dasha talking about um, them both catching COVID. I think Dasha is actually vaccinated, so obviously her, her sort of symptoms and the effects of COVID weren't as harsh as Dasha. But for whatever, sorry, as, as Anna, but for whatever reason, Anna thinks it wasn't because of that. It was because of some autoimmune disease that she's got. But anyway, let's let's just hear the clip. It was yeah, I don't know either. Really. I was debating. <laughs> Um, whether to say that I was transitioning mm -hmm. or getting a facelift mm -hmm. just needed some dime, downtime <laughs> um, no I like literally almost died I and got almost died y'all <laughs> seriously <laughs> like seriously um, I got that COVID. would be so fucked you up got if COVID. you died I got COVID too but yeah. we'll, we'll get back to my COVID the whole cause... squad got COVID um, but... Omicron I think so. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. They don't like <sighs> test for variants. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was the weirdest experience because I got COVID and like two days into it, I started developing like this weird like rash. And then o only afterward did I get like fever, sore throat, body aches, whatever. And I had it for three weeks, which is crazy because yeah. most people yeah. recover within at least you know within two weeks and i wonder why i was texting you and you're such a freak who gave birth in your own apartment <laughs> so you kept like being like yeah i'm okay yeah i was in but like i can't really walk and so you'd say something like that and i was like okay <laughs> i was trying to be like, stoic I'm yeah like stoic you're, you're very like, stoic is what i mean yeah and i was like I'm, so it's hard like for me to gauge really i was like hey, yeah I'm sick i guess but i'm sick too but i'm like no, Mostly I know. Fine. I should be like I more like why. upfront and transparent. I'm just like so prideful and stoic. I never like want to ask for help or anything. But like, I literally couldn't walk third weekend, and my wrists couldn't weren't working. I like couldn't lift the baby, and I was like, okay, this is of like inflammation. Because of inflammation, it was like arthritic inflammation. I was like, okay, this oh is weird, God. and I went on like I spent Christmas here in like a debilitating state of pain and then i went to the hospital on eli's birthday on the 27th because i literally just like couldn't walk and I, like my situation wasn't improving and i like long story short i didn't even have covid like what the covid like you did have covid i did i got the covid but it, it triggered a random freak auto inflammatory like immune response press x for doubt on that one but regardless whether you believe it or not it's just an insane insane way to try and rationalize your like um i wouldn't say even a mistake just 
I, I don't even know what to say. Anyway, let's just, let's just continue on, right? So um, some people had some choice words to say about the entire thing, obviously. And that's sort of what I need. Um, this is it again. Um, you know, her going back and forth with people online. Someone posted this on Reddit. It says, um, her in response to somebody says, I'll recover from the illness and get over the personal insults, which aren't even personal in the end, but I'll never be able to wrap my brain around the sort of mindset that delights in the pain and suffering of the misfortune of others. Again, a little bit of cope, a little bit of a violin story there you know whatever and then someone replies and says you made a podcast dedicated to being cruel and mean-spirited why did you think it would be an exception now again i think that's a bit of a i think that's a little bit of a unfair character characterization but it's not far off right there is a bit of point there to be made and obviously anna replies back and says anyone claiming they're just mirroring the tone of the pod is either stupid or a liar there's no equivalence being tossed off um snark and extensional malice i make fun of myself way more than i make fun of others mm press x for doubt on that one and then on twitter of course the response has been fucking brutal someone here posts um saying there's a lot of text here and dumb stuff but if you know who anna is the drama is great uh, uh, um, anna cashian refused to get the vaccine for health reasons got covid and now has a rare autoimmune, autoimmune disease likely triggered by covid and all the weird red scare fans are turning on her yeah but true i wouldn't say red scare fans are, are weird i'm not weird I don't think so. I think I'm fairly normal. I just think it's hilarious to see these girls, you know, bending over backwards to kind of explain quite clearly a mistake when it comes to Anna's side of things. That should do it again. I think if you're young and you don't have any family, or don't you know family, you don't have any dependents and you just, you just you and your own, I think you can take whatever risk you want. I don't think anyone's bothered about that. Um, I myself, I only got the vaccine because of the quote unquote industry or the scene that I'm in when it comes to nightlife and going around and being a DJ and going to parties and shit. I knew I had to get one just so I can go about trying to um, resume whatever side hustle I had going on there, right? My kind of like second revenue stream in terms of going out and playing and obviously trying to become some level of high or well-known DJ. That's the only reason why I got it. Obviously, when that happened, it didn't change anything because now when you go to clubs, people ask you for flipping lateral flow tests more than they ask you for the fucking vaccine passport. So it was a bit of a pointless time to get it. It was a bit pointless to get it. And also, you know, every new strain it feels like they're going to make you get a booster there's talk here in the uk that supposedly the covid vaccine passports won't be valid unless you get the booster in the future loads are really mad to it. i know that's changed but in general it was a pretty rational decision to get vaccinated because i went to go party i went to dj and i went to be able to travel so i just got it just for that so you'd imagine if you're a new mum with a kid that's under one years old you just want to be there for the kid because like i said those formative years that kid needs their mom way more than they need their dad you know again i like eli he seems like a cool dude but if eli didn't exist that kid would be fine with anna right so you need to be there for your kid so you'd imagine that would be the the kind of deciding your kind of guiding north star in order for you to get the vaccine just for the cause of that for alone now if you decide you want to make a hard stance against a booster cool but just get the actual vaccine and then move on from there you would imagine so but you know that didn't happen um next tweet from somebody here says anna k yeah that's the thing with these mandates right it's all about um like control right her baby shrieking and flaping to flesh tender calls in the background after covid infused breast milk turned into john carpet is the thing that's a bit mean i don't like that one another person says the rest is anna k is currently dealing with long-term damage from getting covid after refusing to be vaccinated <laughs> uh, but i think she basically what she's trying to say is that she's always had autoimmune issues or whatnot and maybe um, getting COVID flared them up but it also I think she's arguing that there's no guarantee that she would have got the vaccine it wouldn't have flared up anyway but people are then not saying that most likely the detractors are basically saying most likely she got the flare up because she wasn't vaccinated and then she got COVID but who knows what's right um another one says oh my fucking god maybe universe does have a sense of humor anna k allegedly revealing she got wrecked by covid transgressive podcaster joins her host of the day. i think another quote there um another person says oh no that's from january what's the person says here i know i've been waiting for me. no another person says i know people i know people have been waiting for me to weigh in on this very important um issue so let me be very clear it's very objectively funny that Anna Kay has long COVID and no health insurance. Again, I think these are people that mean because they make, that's the thing that's really strange about these kind of, um, this kind of discourse. Cause it feels like a lot of the kind of meanness that's directed at the Red Scare Girls comes mostly because they make a lot of money, right? Cause I think their patrons at what? Is it like 30K? I don't know how much it is. It's, it's just a lot of money, right? For what they do and considering, you know, some people think they're dumb and shit. 
But I think that the most reason why people are getting annoyed of it is because they make a lot of money. But it could be argued that Patreon and those kind of places are maybe a true reflection of how much people actually like you because they're willing to pay money to listen to you speak. Because it's all well and good me rambling into this microphone for free, right? With whatever views I get, no one gives a shit. But if people are willing to pay money to listen to you behind a paywall, that usually means what you're doing or saying is resonating with people and they're willing to pay you money for it. So they're willing to compensate you for that fact. And it doesn't matter if it's one person or a million people, those are actual fans. So when people kind of attack them for making money, it feels like it's also an attack on the listenership. Like as if, oh, how dumb are you? You listen to this girl. It's like, it's not really a dumb thing. It's just entertainment. They provide you with a couple of hours of entertainment, what, every two months? No, every two weeks, if if that. And yeah, it's fun. I don't really know, but I think a lot of the hate they get is only because they make money. I really do feel like that. As much as people disagree with their politics and their worldviews, I think most of it has to do with the money. It continues here, it says, another person says, Anna got COVID purely through get being a dumbass, LMAO. Another person says, Anna, her, Anna K hurt the people. So Anna K hurt that people are making fun of her for getting slammed by COVID. I thought these women's like victim blaming, you reap what you sow. It's interesting too, because I think she got COVID and then Anna K's nemesis, AOC, got COVID too. People are hypothesizing that AOC got COVID because she licked her boyfriend's feet. And people are hypothesizing that Anna K got COVID because she might have licked Alex Jones's armpit. I think so, but who knows? And that person says here, um, it probably wasn't even COVID. That's when. That's just when she was diagnosed. Anna K was out there stealing cocaine model Valor when she really just looks like that because she has a chronic autoimmune disorder. Yo, people really hate these girls, isn't it? Jesus, another person here says Anna K in hospital with some severe complications from COVID after taking her IV drip off after an hour. She doesn't get too many calories. Yo, people absolutely hate these girls. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing here. What else? Another one's got a lot of views. People saying um, her Anna K almost died. Me trying to hit. Okay, I don't know what that's about. Another person says here, Anna K nearly dying from COVID and insisting that it was just a random autoimmune disorder that had nothing to do with her being affected storyline is both sad and funny. Um, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, let's read a quote actually from Reddit. I thought that, 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 that and then ended there. We can move on. But I thought that this was a fairly interesting exchange. And again, I think she just needs to put her phone down. Someone that's close to Anna and as a friend needs to just tell her to stop replying to random people on the internet because it's not going to help. So this is the kind of back and forth shared with somebody on the subreddit, which I thought was fairly, fairly funny because that person was going for her neck and wasn't really letting up in any way, shape or form. So let's just quickly check this out. Once it loads on here, her freaking load. Come on, you mother. Yeah, there you go. So this is cursey or Reddit. Someone was not giving Anna any, any kind of leeway and reminding her just how irresponsible she was with her platform. Me, 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 me. People on the internet are wild, man. This stuff I don't like. Usually the stuff that I don't like, I either take the piss out of it, like comedically, or I just ignore it, right? But I don't, you know, actively listen to it for it to piss me off. I try not to do that. The last time I did that was like... um two bears one cave podcast with like Bert Crash and Tom Segura I couldn't stand Bert so I just stopped listening to the pod doesn't mean I'm gonna leave hate comments underneath it or you get riled up if, if they do something that I don't like so it's not that deep but anyway this is this is the back and forth of Reddit I'm gonna read it out for you if you're just listening to the podcast itself so this is a uh, somebody commenting I guess on the um, to on the uh, on the topic of the show I think so someone says here LMAO, Anna's cope is hilarious. They both got COVID, both had wildly different experiences, but Anna refuses to admit maybe the fact that she was unvaxxed and Dasha was vaxxed has something to do with their different experiences. And then, and then obviously Anna replies because she's on the subreddit, which I think is a bad idea. Um, she says, hmm, I was told by two different doctors that this freak auto-inflammatory reaction could have equally been caused by the vaccine. Given that I didn't develop any respiratory symptoms and cleared um, the COVID itself from my system pretty quickly. What's, what's this, the COVID? Also, can someone tell me in the comments below if you know, is this a common thing? Because it's the first time I've heard somebody mention, supposedly if you don't get any respiratory sy sy symptoms, that, you could, that means you don't have COVID. Is that true? Or that makes you frozen to doubt that you might have COVID. I guess COVID mostly is like a, a what do you call it? The, the the main consequences people have are respiratory in terms of like shortness of breath and whatnot. But this idea that just because you don't have any respiratory system symptoms, 
that means that you don't have COVID, where does that come from? Or is that just a woo-woo thing? Let me know if you know. Um, anyway, it continues here. It says, I wouldn't be too sure that what explains that, that I wouldn't be too sure that's what explains the different experiences. And given the seriousness of the situation, anyone scolding me over this shit is godless more and sorry. Again, you can't, you can't be a, you can't say shit like this. What did she expect people to do? People don't, people, some people clearly don't like these girls. And any opportunity to dunk on them and to laugh and to point and to say, ha ha, told you so, they're going to take it. I don't think that's a bad thing. Same way that she didn't miss opportunity to laugh and kind of say, I told you so when AOC, you know, started, you know, pretending like she was going to get fucking hung outside the Capitol building when she was nowhere near the building itself. Right. And she kind of proved, oh, yeah, this woman is maybe an intention seeker and maybe her intentions aren't as pure as she makes it out to be. But, you know, you have to expect the same too when you do something. It is what it is. The game is a game. Um, that person replies back to her on Twitter and says, you know, deep down I'm right. I haven't posted on this sub in over a year and came here to call me godless moron because you know you fucked yourself. This disorder will follow you for the rest of your life. Ouch. The best you can do is lash out at a stranger who can see what you're doing. You're all about being honest with yourself and taking accountability. But the truth of what happened is that it's likely this bad because you're because you're immunocompromised and you didn't get the fucking vax. I didn't say fucking anyway. Call me a lib or whatever, but that's the truth of what happened. And it had and it'd be better for your own health um who is not young or healthy ouch just got the vax because you're in a narrow category that actually needs it maybe i'm scolding you but you should be strong enough to swallow your pride and just get the help you need and this is from a fan too right so this is the thing you have to kind of notice um i know she would maybe argue and say maybe not a fan but i think this is a fan because only a fan would care this much really even when they're scolding you she replies back and says, no, I came here to make sure people weren't too mad about us not releasing an app for so long because I feel bad and guilty for the hiatus and was honestly stunned by the gross over eager judgment. That's one thing as well that I didn't get. Why didn't they just explain why they were off? Hey, we're off because we've got COVID. Give us some time to recover and we'll be back. And people just left it alone and then they would have been fine. They would have got some ha ha he is at, at that time, but it would have died down by now. I think holding everyone in suspense, not explaining what happened and then explaining it and trying to cope and diminish you know, and trying to rationalize it when we all know what the issue is <laughs> clearly it, it they basically kind of shot themselves in the foot it felt like it continues it's also creepy and mean-spirited to say of someone especially someone who just went through a health crisis their disorder will follow them for the rest of their life when you don't know what you're talking about there's a good chance my condition will go into remission and as i said on the pod which people seem to have missed it's been equally documented in people who got the vaccine so there's no guarantee that's what it did it either way that's from my doctors by the way Prior to this, I've never had any health problems whatsoever. I'm a strong, resilient person and will get through it. My bad for lashing out and good luck to you. Anna K is getting the absolute bombs on her own subreddit, man. But yeah, they got COVID. One person had the vax, got over it quickly. One person didn't, got all an immune disease, nearly died on the, you know, in the hospital alone, um, joints freezing up and shit like i can't imagine how scary that must have all been that situation so again i'm glad they're okay i'm glad they're on the road to recovery i'm glad the pod is back but jesus man what a way to make a comeback in it what a way to make a fucking comeback after all that time out <laughs> oh mate pe people were wondering where they were and that's where they were they weren't they weren't they went to some art ho party you know getting fucked up and talking shit they were actually <laughs> on their deathbeds you know separately trying to recover uh you gotta love it man you gotta love it you really do but yeah anyway that's the next show episode number 538 thanks so much for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual if it's your first time checking the show via youtube like subscribe of course if you want to support the show via patreon please do one dollar one pound you know you know the link it's in the description too you get access to a bonus episode every single week a bonus episode on there so check it out i would really appreciate that and i'll see you guys again very soon peace